Hello everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Amir Hussain Ahrari, I'm a Google Earth Engine expert. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do downscaling process for MODIS land cover product using Landsat and Sentinel data. This is another popular topic for the downscaling that most of the users looking for. So, first of all, you need to select your study area. In this tutorial, I'm gonna select a basin in Iran, in the northwest of Iran, that is including different land cover types. My study area is a basin in northwestern of Iran, and here, as you can see, this is Urmia Basin that contained Urmia Lake here. So, to call basin layers, go to search places on dataset first and type about hydroshed basin layers. As you can see, the hydroshed basin levels available from the first uh, from level 1 to level 10. Typically, we are using level 5 or level 4 for most of the studies, at least in my own experience, because different levels provided different details of basin borders and it depends on your target of interest to, set, uh, to decide which one of these levels could be useful for you. But in my experience, mostly I used level 4 and level 5. Import it into the code and then select your region of interest. So my region of the interest is here and now I'm gonna select a basin that's including this region. So, make a new variable and assign as ROI or region of interest. We have a table layer and now I can filter the table based on the location showing by marked region in geometry. So, next, throw the mapped add layer First, using map.center object, we can have focus on the region of interest or ROI, as you can see here. And then, through the map.add layer, we can visualize it just like that. Run the code, and now you can see that the border of the basin drawed here according to the code we have written here. So, now as you can see, the basin uh, actually has very complicated border. Uh, definitely, uh, several number of vertices involved to draw in this region. And that reduces the speed of processing in the Earth engine. For example, if you make a print from ROI, ROI.geometry, you can see how many vertices, as you can see, uh, around 2000 vertices used to draw this region. And this is a large number. And we need to do some sort of simplification first because it highly reduces the speed of processing. How we can do it? The ROI is a feature collection. Now we need to make a loop first as a function that input feature considered as a feature here and then the function returning the input feature or the basin layer with simplified structure through simplified function. Simplify including one main argument that is the degree of simplification. For example, I want to do simplification with this number, 1000. And now, when I run the code, the number of vertices reduced to 500. And then you can see that the shape of the border is same, but uh, we have lower number of vert vertices. And also you can uh, reduce the number of vertices by increasing the degree of simplification. It's totally up to you 
how to do simplification. For example, if I use, for example, 3000 here, now I have only 170 vertices with the same shape structure. So it is good for my application. But if you want, you can increase the simplification by changing the argument here. So after simplification process, check geometry off and then go for the next step. In the next step, in the first, uh, uh, in the next step, I need to call Modi's land cover product. Through the search places and data set, type Modi's land cover data. The Modi's land cover is a target variable or land cover source in this tutorial that we want to improve its special detail. Modis land cover type available with annual temporal frequency and 500 meter spatial resolution imported into the code as an image collection. Make a variable for modis equals to then image collection, imported image collection assigned to the modis variable. So then we need to use filter date to select a single year or the target year that we want to increase its spatial detail. So for example, I'm gonna select 2020 as a target year to, uh, to improve its spatial resolution. Get filter date. So now make two variable as time start and time end. Time start equals to 2020 and time end equals to 2021, just like that. And then use the time start and time end instead of start and end. If you want to see the uh, arguments when you are inside the, inside the parentheses, press control and space together. Then you will see the arguments, the optional or mandatory. But here, the start and day, uh, start and end, both of them are mandatory. So, time start and time end. We are selecting a single year for the land cover map. Then, print modis variable to see how it works. One image collection including one element here. We have one feature for 2020, as you can see, in the bands, 13 elements available. In the modest land cover product, different maps, different land cover maps are available based on different standards. But mostly or typically in the remote sensing community, we are using LC type one as a target band for the land cover maps that's including various type of classes that select if you want to select a band something you can see here you need to use select select lc type one save the code and run it again in the right panel still we have one image collection or one element here but this time it has only one band that is LC type number one. After the band is uh, after the land cover is called, we need to convert it from an image collection to a single image. So to do this, dot first helping us or allows us to select the single image or the first and single image we have in this collection. Run it again. This time we have an image, not image collection anymore. So with one band that is LC type one. Then I want to show you a visual overview from the land cover data we are calling here. Using map.add layer, you can visualize modis map LC type one 
that is clipped based on the region of interest or ROI you target basing and then for the visualization we need to we need to use uh, a standard color palette for the modis product if you go to the data description and open it in a single tab you can have access to the sample code provided by google for this product go to the description part first and here there is a sample code based on javascript such kind of sample is available and developed by the google for all of the products that is presenting by uh, google earth engine platform and you can use that so here there is a variable explaining the minimum maximum and the palette uh, and also the palette color for the land cover lc type one just you need to copy and paste it into your code back to the code in the code editor paste it here you can change the name of the variables this is a variable with the dictionary structure as you can see starting and ending with this uh, actually uh, sign that shows that this is a dictionary format that's including different arguments so I, I'm changing to visualize it uh, to V's that's showing the visualization parameters so now I have visualization parameters in the map.app layer and the layer name will be modis lc with 500 meter spatial resolution and use the faults at the end to avoid automatic visualization that again this is a kind of factor that reduces the speed of processing in the earth engine save your code and run it again after code runs here in the layers we have a new variable modis land cover with 500 meter spatial resolution you can see the different classes very well the bare lands the crop lands the water content or water bodies urban areas and also the other classes available here so if you want to know more about the classes and values in this product just go to the data description if you go to the data description in the bands you can see the lc type 1 this is annual international uh, classification that is called as igbp classification map and here there is a class table that's showing a relationship between colors and numbers and the description of each classes is available here that's helping you to get more understanding about the type of classes and their characteristic very well for your own study area. So back to the code. Now I'm going to show you how to improve a special detail in this product. So now we need to use some sort of predictors. In this tutorial, I'm going to use Landsat and Sentinel-1 data as a predictors for the land cover maps for the uh, for the modest land cover data we have here so make a new part into the code and now i'm gonna call predictor variables here make a new variable and uh, make a new pr uh, variable for a new or first predictor that is landsat data for 2020 uh, for 2020 as you know, the Landsat 8 data is available. So here, go to the search places on dataset and type and search for Landsat 8 collection 2 level 2 data. Landsat 8 collection 2 level 2 is available. Import it into the code, just like that. The new image collection for Landsat sign in here and then we need to uh, use filter date and filter bound to 
uh, actually span the Landsat data or limit the Landsat data to 2020, the year we have classified map, and also to the region that our classification map or our map or land cover map is available. That filter date based on again time start and time end. I'm limiting data to the specific period of time that land cover is available. And this is the same for the region of the interest. My region of interest is the geometry or the ROI or region I have selected. Now using this code, I'm calling all Landsat data available for this region and 2020. If you want to avoid plot impact, you can use the uh, actually some sort of cloud, uh, cloud filters. First, let's make a print from Landsat data. In the right panel, you can see there is an image collection with 200 elements or feature. Here, you can see the all images, each one of them including 19 bands, but we want to use only a few of them. For example, we want to use uh, band number 6 and 7 as SWIR regions, and we want to use uh, band number 4 and 5 for the NDVI, and band number 3 and 5 for the NDWI indices that are very helpful for the land cover mapping and predictions. And also, to do this first, we need to use some sort of properties we have here. The properties for the satellite data in the Google Earth engine is like the metadata that's explaining the characteristic and providing some information regarding the data we are using. For example, when I want to work with Landsat Collection 2 Level 2, first I need to check the data description here. Go to a new page and then you can see that this product is available since 2013. And if you go to the bands, you can get information about the resolution that is 30 meter. And also you can see there is a scale and offset meaning that there are coefficients that must uh, be applied on Landsat data before further processing that is necessary. And now, if you go back and look more into the properties, you can see that here there is a property as cloud cover that helping us to make a filter based on to have access to the cloud free data. And regarding to the coefficients for the pre-processing, you can see that the, all of them listed here in the properties, and we can call them from, from the property of each date and apply them on available data. So first, I want to make a, a less than filter for the cloud cover property because I want to use those of satellite data in which the cloud cover is less than 10%. This is based on the percent. So just copy and paste it into the filter. Earth engine that filter. But first I need to make a filter. Then inside parentheses, earth engine that filter dot LT. The less than filter helping us to filter image collection based on property and value. The property name is cloud cover and the value is 10. I want to call those of Landsat's in which cloud cover is less than 10%. Save the code and run it again. This time, you will have lower number of Landsat data reduced to 99 Landsat images 
for this region of interest. Then I need to select the target bands. All of the target bands starting with SR, meaning surface reflectance. Dot select, as I mentioned earlier, the select is a function allows us to select the target band. Dot select, I want to select those of bands starting with S or B and the rest of them uh, no matter. Everything could be. So run the code again. In the right side, again, there is a feature and there is a band here. Only surface reflectant bands selected. So now we need to use a loop structure to do some sort of calculation on all images available in this collection we make we made so as you can see for the first step we need to apply scale and factors available here so to make a loop you can use that map that map inside parentheses if you want to use some sort of calculation based on the loop structure that uh, will apply on that and if you want to apply it on each available data you need to make a function here inside the loop each input image from existing collection considering as an img here and then in the first step we need to get the scale and offset, the multiplication and also the add value here or gain and offset. Make a variable for gain. Whenever you want to pick something from properties, you can use img.get. img.get. The gain value is the malt variable, is a variable including malt. And now, if you want to turn it to the number, Earth engine that's number used. Then, for the offset, we can use the same structure. Earth engine that's number from input image that's get, this time add value. Just like that. Gain and offset from each input IMG extracted and is stored in the gain and offset variables. Then, gain and offset must be applied on each image on surface reflectance bands. So here we have variable as surface reflectance from input image that we can apply that multiply the gain value and then add it to the offset. As you can see, this is a linear equation. Using this coefficient and linear relationship, we can also uh, uh, turn our data from digital number to the surface reflectance values. The collection to level two data already radiometrically and atmospherically corrected and this is very helpful thing because we don't need to do some sort of radiometric and atmospheric correction anymore just you can apply a scale and factor and directly you will reach to the surface reflectance unit so after surface reflectance recovery using this process you need to calculate some sort of predictors that are helpful for the land cover prediction. For example, one of them is NDVI image. At the same time, you can see the land cover for the region of interest. And also, I, it should be noted that this tutorial can be used for all around the world, no matter where you are working. In all around the world, the modest land cover, Landsat images, and the Google Earth Engine platform is available and you can use that for this kind of tutorial. So, 
and then make a variable for NDVI equals to from surface reflectance data that normalized difference is a function helping us to get a normalization relationship between band number 5 and band number 4 near infrared and red region the near infrared is band number 5 and the red is band number 4 just like that this is a linear relationship and then rename it as NDVI this is the normalization relationship between near infrared and red and that this is the NDVI another variable is another predictor is NDWI from surface reflectance data we can get normalized relationship between band number 3 green region of electromagnetic spectrum and near infrared this is a very helpful equation for the water body detection if you browse on my youtube channel definitely you will find some uh, several tutorials about the water body extraction in which i have used the uh, relationship between band number 3 and the near infrared band number 5 together to detect the water bodies and get the time series for the water area SR B5 and then rename it as NDWI so another uh, variable or predictor that can, which can help us for the land cover mapping are uh, short wave infrared bands so this is SWIR short wave infrared equals to the short wave infrared bands if you don't know uh, if you have no enough information about the bands and the characteristic uh, you can see that uh, the Landsat bands starting from band 1 to the band 7 these are multi-spectral bands in the reflective portion of electromagnetic spectrum as you can see these data are sorted from the shortest wavelengths to the longest wavelengths this is the order of the bands so the bands beyond the for example uh, 0.7 micrometer uh, referred as infrared region so as you can see band number 5 is a near infrared region and the wavelengths greater than the near infrared region called as short wave infrared as you can see we have two we have two short wave infrared here band number six and band number seven that are useful bands for the air band area detection and the moisture detection and even vegetation moisture analysis that's why i'm going to use these two bands also for the study area because they can be useful parameters for the uh, further estimate for the uh, some classes extraction so that's why here from surface reflectance data I'm selecting bands 5 bands 6 and 7 I want to uh, select those of bands starting with SR SRB 6 and 7 just like that so the function finally returns the one image stack for each date earth engine .cat make a stack layer for each date including NDVI NDWI and SWIR bands so just like that save the code and run it again in the right side a new image collection with same number of elements returned for each date we have NDVI, NDWI and SWIR bands all of them are available these are initial predictors 
that we need for the uh, further analysis. So, and in the next step, I want to actually use some sort of statistical operations such as percentile to reflect the NDVI and other bands changes during a time. For example, instead of uh, having a collection of all NDVI data that makes your code very heavy and also very uh, difficult for the further processing, we can use some sort of a statistical operation to produce limited number of images that reflecting the indices changes during the time. For example, percentile is very, very useful in this regard. So now for the Landsat data, I make a, another variable as Landsat equals to or Landsat stat equals to get Landsat data first and then dot reduce first engine dot reducer dot percentile is a helpful technique to show the uh, temporal changes based on different thresholds in our uh, data set instead of having all data during the time uh, during the time span you can use the percentile to show the temporal variations with a few number of images, fewer number of images. So now I'm gonna percentile 25th and 50 and for example 75. What does it mean? Actually, for example, percentile 50 uh, referring those of values in pixels in which 50% of observation lie, lies before that. For example, uh, percentile 50 selects a NDVI value that 50% of uh, whole NDVI values are less than that single value. It's very simple technique. And seven, this is also same for the 75 and also the 25. The percentile here uh, is calculating for all input bands NDVI, NDWI, and SWIR that's reflecting change of these variables during the time. For example, you can see that 99 images we have, uh, for example, 100 images we have with four bands for each date, meaning that uh, 400, 400 bands we have now and I want to limit them to a few number of Landsat data that's reflecting temporal changes and this technique helping me to make a light data set that's uh, highly helping me to speed up processing in the Earth engine that is very important. Now I make a print for Landsat stats run the code. As you can see, uh, 400 bands actually uh, here translated their change into 12 bands for the NDVI, for the NDWI, and uh, SWIR bands. It's very helpful technique. For the next step, we need to call all other uh, predictors. One of the classes we always have problem in the classification is the airman area. It is very difficult to separate the airman area from the bear land. This is one of the typical problems that most of the users face in the remote sensing communities and satellite data analysis. Hopefully, in the Google Earth engine, there are some products regarding to the urban area that uh, can be very helpful if you add them or if you have them in your data set because highly facilitating the process of urban structure and helping you to avoid uh, mixing between urban area 
and non-urban area, specifically the bare lands. If you want to if you want to find these kind of products, just go to the browse data catalog to browse and find the target data in this regard. So go to the browse by tags. As I mentioned earlier in the previous videos on my YouTube channel, browse by tags is a part of Google Earth Engine data catalog that helping you to search your data based on your topic, based on your keyword, and based on the specific problem you are working on. For example, my problem is about the urban area. And now I can find all the data set tagged as urban in the Earth engine. If you go to the tag, you can see all the data sets available here that tagged as urban meaning that these data set directly or indirectly can be used for the urban studies or urban solutions. So, for example, uh, one of the useful products is global built-up surfaces that is based on Landsat data because it is from 1975 uh, to 2030. It is based on some sort of predictions. You can go to this product and see some sort of specifications here. It has 100 meter spatial resolution that is very good for our study because we want to improve our spatial resolution from 500 and 100 is still good helping us to have access to enough details in our map. So it is available from 1975 developed by the JRC and also in the citations, you can find the related uh, references and in the descriptions, you can get more information. And also the code example is also available here. Go to the bands and here we have a build surface as a band and now you can add it into your code. Just copy and paste its name. Now I'm copy and paste it into the code as you can see in the search places and data set and now import it into the code just like that image collection number three and now for the visualization you can make a variable assigning the image collection number three and then print the urban to see that how many layers available in the third image collection. As you can see here, we have one image collection with 12 elements. For each, we have one uh, urban layer for every five years from 1975 to 2030. So the target year for my study is 2020. And now I can filter out data based on the target year that filter date and uh, I'm selecting this data for 2020 based on time start and time end. And then you can bound your data to the region of interest or the basin we are working or the ROI. Run the code again. In the right side, you can see one element we have that is including 2020. But we need to turn it from image collection to the image format. That's the way I'm using for this solution. That first helping us to turn it from image collection to the image format. It has two bands and we need to work with build surface. This is a target band. That select dot select this is the build surface save your code and then we want to visualize it through the map.add layer you can see map.add layer the urban layer that is clipped based on the region of interest or ROI and leave the visualization parameters empty and layers name as urban and use the faults at the end. 
save your code and run it again. After a few moments, a new layer in the layers appear. Here, urban area. To increase the contrast, go to the setting and use the stretching techniques available here. So I'm stretching the contrast. So it seems something's wrong. Uh, to answer this problem, I will try to check the code provided by Google Earth Engine for this product first. Go back to the data description page and here in the description there is a code editor example here that helping us to get understanding about how to use and how to work with, uh, with this product. Although this is an image collection, but uh, Google provided an example here that is called by earthengine.image uh, for single years separately. And this is, could be a good solution to solve this issue because this is a code example that provided by Google and if you want to understand it works or not, open it into the code editor in a new browser, in a new page. After a few moments, you will have the code here and be able to run it and see the results same time. For example, I'm running the code and now this is for Delhi, then you can, that you can see it works very well and seems earth engine.image works better for this product rather than earth engine.image collection. So we can use this example here, but we can change it for own desired year. For target year is 2020. I'm a copy and paste and also uh, just copy and paste it into your code. Instead of image collection that doesn't work, we can have earth engine a new variable with image format for 2020. If you want to change it for any other years, it is very simple and uh, you can just change the years according to the information in the data description. As you can see for 1975, the number of years changed. For 2020, every five years, this is available uh, with 100 meter spatial resolution. And the target band is built surface. Back to the code, and now uh, we don't need to filter date and filter bones anymore because they are usually used for the uh, image collection format. When you are working with the image, you don't need to any filter anymore. And here, Earth Engine that image for 2020 that is clipped based on the ROI, and then you can check it out for your region of interest. Save the code again and run it. After a few moments, layer for urban area is available here. Try to increase the contrast again, but again, we have the same problem. I don't know what the problem is. Maybe something is wrong for the selecting the region of interest or the visualization. We can try it again. Back to the, go back to the data description page. And here, this is visualization parameters that we can use from image 2020, the built surface also selected. This is exam, uh, uh, exact same, uh, we can copy and paste the same code uh, to see what the problem is. As you can see that, I just copy and paste it without any change. There it is. This is the urban, paste it, built up, image 2020, just like that, equals to earth engine that image, built up area, built surface selected, this is visualization parameters, map.center and add layer, no need, uh, map uh, we don't need to map.center anymore, and remove the map.add layer, and now we want to show built up area for 2020 and remove the layer name. And the layer name, for example, could be urban and visualization parameter is also same. Run the code again. 
let's see how it works now it works properly and try again for clip it based on the region of interest I'm clipping based on ROI and now you can see the air and area for 2020 very well there it is increase the contrast go to the layer setting here and increase the contrast by different stretching technique and click on apply yes now this product is going to help us to detect the air and area with a higher accuracy that could be very useful for the data classification and separating an urban and non-urban areas. So, after Landsat data collected and also the urban area product is ready, now we can combine them into a single data set and then go for the modeling process. So, uh, just let me to make faults here to avoid automatic visualization. After we make sure the urban area, uh, the urban layer is uh, is okay, just make a new data set. A new data set created here equals to Landsat statistical information, multi-temporal statistical data extracted from the Landsat, and then throw the add band the urban area or built-up region for 2020 added to the Landsat statistic. As you know, the urban area doesn't change uh, very much from one year to another year. That's why you can use, for example, 2020 for 2001, 2 or 2019 and 18 because the urban growth uh, may occur uh, very gradually and also maybe every 10 years we will have a clear change in the urban areas uh, in the urban areas and urban structure that's why we don't need to use the urban data specifically for one uh, for year by year so the data set now is ready i'm printing data set to make sure that everything is fine and i have all uh, predictors together in a single image collection now predictors are available and then we need to have the target variable or modis next to the predictors in the same collection that add bands again help me to add the target band and predictors all together in, in a single collection run a code again a new image collection with 14 bands this is the source or target variable that we want to import with the spatial resolution and all the predictors ndvi ndwi urban layer and swir bands all of them available here with a resolution from uh, with resolution from 30 meter to 100 meter so now we want to go through the modeling process so make a new variable for training data before uh, defining uh, um, actually the classifier or the model that we want to improve the spatial resolution first we need to collect this uh, data samples or training data because we want to train the model based on the samples we are collecting so training data equals to first from the data set dot stratified sample the stratified sample is automatic method for the sampling from each class uh, from the target variable we have here for example we want to do sampling for the different land covers we have in lc type 1 a stratified sample do this process automatically and also you don't need to do this process manually it's very helpful a stratified sample we have here and also a couple of variables should be uh, used in the training for the training data the first is the number of points equals to for example I want to collect 100 
points for each class separately. So, and the class band, the band I want to uh, collect samples based on that region is LC type 1. The class band is the land cover band or the source. We want to improve its spatial resolution. Region of interest is ROI and SK should be something between 30 and 100 because the predictors uh, spatial resolution ranges from 30 to 100. We can select a mid value uh, because the final resolution will be something between 100 and 30 meter. And now I can, for example, set 50 as the final target spatial resolution. I want to consider for the downscaling and final spatial resolution. Something between can be good. So the training data collected using a stratified sample. Then I want to define the model and train the model based on the training data. Here we have a model Earth Engine that classifier. Hopefully in the Google Earth Engine, uh, several machine learning models as a classifier or as a regression technique is available. And also this is a very good situation for us. We have access to lots of tools here to do uh, different types of the modeling process. For example, I want in the previous tutorials, uh, mostly I used uh, random forest or the other methods uh, such as the random forest, uh, such as uh, cart classifier and also gradient boost method. But in this tutorial, I'm going to use LibSVM, one of the strongest methods for the classification process. Uh, unfortunately, in the Google Earth Engine, the SVM is also, is also available with classifier format, not regression format. That's why I have to use LibSVM for the classification here. But if LibSVM or SVM is available with regression format, then we can use it for the other downscaling approaches that I uh, mentioned in the previous tutorials. But here you can use LibSVM, random forest, cart, minimum distance, maximum likelihood. All the classifiers can be used for this tutorial, unlike the previous tutorial uh, in which I used uh, the regression format. Because here the target band is the classified data and then we want to improve its spatial resolution using classification process. That lead uh, SVM will be trained based on the training data but here uh, we should consider a couple of arguments. The feature the features equals to training data and class property equals to LC type 1, LC type 1, and input properties equals to, the input properties should be uh, equal to uh, uh, band names, the data set band names. Data set, if you want to get the band names from data set, just write the band names just like that. Input properties, subsampling, and subsampling seed is also available here. So now everything is ready, and also we have the model, and we have the training data, and uh, the model trained based on the uh, support vector machine and the training data collected before. Now I want to apply this model on uh, predictors. So, but as you can see in the data set, we have predictors and target variable alongside each other. Uh, next to each other, but now I need to remove the LC type 1 from the predictors because the predictors must be used for the uh, modeling process from now on and also LC type must be removed here. So make a new variable as predictors. I want to extract the predictors band names. So from dataset dot band names, get the name of each band first and then remove the band name, uh, the remove the target band's name. The target band's name is LC type 1. Here it is. And after this, we need to apply the model on predictors. 
another variable modis map same as uh, first here we had the modis data with 500 meter spatial resolution and now I want to have modis with 30 meter spatial resolution but as we have one band with 100 meter spatial resolution uh, definitely the spatial resolution will be something between 30 and 100 truly actually so the modis with 30 meter equals from dataset dot select predictors and then classify them based on the model we created so use uh, get the print from modis 30 to make sure everything is right if there is any error you can see here images under computing once the final image created i can do the visualization for the results remember to save your code The code link is also available under this video in the description box on my YouTube channel. And if you had any problem regarding to the coding or practice or something like that, you can uh, compare yours with mine. And then if a problem still exists, you can reach me out on my YouTube channel and ask your question. I will try to answer and help you to solve the issue. So. Finally, the image is ready and now I want to do a visualization process. Recently, we did the visualization for Modis with 500 meter spatial resolution. Just copy and paste it again. But this time, instead of the original Modis, we have downscaled Modis with, for example, 50 meter spatial resolution. Run the code again. So make a little z uh, make a little zoom and then click on Modis land cover. You can see the Modis land cover product is ready. But so as you can see here, classification is done, but the quality of output is a disaster. And now we need to figure it out what happened uh, because there is no consistency between the uh, Modis original land cover and also the results we achieved so here uh, there may be a, a problem uh, in the input data and also for a scaling uh, for example when you reduce the scale uh, value definitely you will have a more smooth results for example here i'm trying to reduce it to 100 uh, to reduce some noises that may happen because of the higher uh, scale value for uh, training data and then I want to see that when I change the scale how much the quality of output changes. The quality of output depends on different things the classifier, the predictors and also the scale value all of them important criteria for the quality of output and we can change them uh, for different places to reach uh, to a good and optimum values and combination for the output now uh, downscaling is done but the quality of downscaling is very very bad and now i want to do some changes in the model and predictors to see that how much the output will change this way of correction and this way of uh, going through your code helping to get understanding about the impacts of different criteria in the downscaling process when you are dealing with the satellite data so now the new result is ready and I'm visualizing here again and again you can see that uh, the quality of output is a little better but still uh, there is 
some inconsistencies between the inputs and outputs. Here you can see that we missed some classes maybe and also it would be good if we add for example uh, one radar images to the region of interest to make a better visualization. Let's try with Sentinel-1 data as, a, as, a, uh, as uh, another additional uh, actually predictor here to see that how it can help uh, to the downscaling process. Now I'm gonna add Sentinel-1 data here I'm typing Sentinel-1 and then import it into the code as a single image collection but it was already imported in my code then I remove the image uh, the uh, one of the Sentinel uh, Sentinel's collection and then in the code make a variable for Sentinel or SOAR this is synthetic aperture radar image equals to so image collection number four filter it based on time start and time end and filter it based on region of interest and also there are some filters that is specifically used for sentinel data filter earth engine that filter that list contains we need those of uh, SAR data in which transmitter receiver polarization that is one of the important properties equals to VV transmitter receiver polarization equals to VV and another filter as equal filter for instrument mode and also the instruments mode for the input data must be uh, for example uh, equals to interferometric weights and also the orbit pass will also uh, different some of the images are ascending and some of them are descending for example I'm gonna call the descending images let me to make a print for SAR data to show you how three orbit path changes and which property exactly uh, indicates the orbit path. Print SAR first, just I want to select one of the images. No, first just limit to one because I want to see one of the images. So here we have one image collection, 10 of SAR data is available and as you can see uh, we have several parameters but and also instrument mode is one of them and the, another important uh, property is about the orbiting path and some of the SAR data are ascending and some of them are descending for the SAR data process it would be better uh, to filter out them based on the orbit pass because if you use the descending and ascending together definitely it will cause some sort of errors in the final results we can also try for that to see how much it yeah, how much it is important for the classification purpose if ascending or descending uh, doesn't uh, doesn't work well we can combine them into a single collection let's see how it works so now I'm gonna filter data based on orbiting uh, orbit pass property those of data that are descending just like that and then I'm gonna get an average and here I'm gonna select the VV band vertical vertical the electromagnetic radiation in the microwave actively radiates from the sensor toward the target and back is scattered toward the satellite vertically vertically goes and vertically back to the satellite now I'm gonna get an average here so this is the SAR data and then dot add bands you can add it to the predictor this is another predictor 
and also this is uh, there is a problem too many arguments for the filter oh yes here there is a problem first engine filter dot equals it was my fault sorry forgot to use equal filter run a code again so we need wait until new classified data gets ready once the classification is done we can uh, check it out visually with the input modest land cover with 500 meter spatial resolution remember to save your code Once the image calculated, then we can go for uh, visualization process. One of the strongest uh, validation for the land cover mapping is visualization comparison, or vi uh, sorry, visual comparison actually. So the land cover data with 500 meter gets ready. Check it on and see how the quality of output is. Now it is much better and also it's very, very close to the input. This is the input we had and now it's a special resolution clearly increased to 100 meter. It is something between 100 meter and 30 meter or an average. Uh, because uh, here in the predictors, for example, the Sentinel, the SAR data is, for example, 10 meter spatial resolution, and also the built up data is 100 and Landsat data 30 meter, and that's why the final average, a final spatial resolution will be an average of all input spatial resolutions. So you saw in this tutorial how we can do the downscaling process using lib SVM and also Landsat and Sentinel predictors to improve the uh, spatial resolution in the satellite data in the modest land cover product. And I hope uh, this tutorial will be helpful for you. And if you had any pr a problem and if you had any question in this uh, regarding this tutorial, you can reach me out on my YouTube channel and ask your questions. I will this tutorial help you to get more detail for the land cover data you are working if they are related to the modest product. Then uh, remember to follow my YouTube channel and you will get more and more tutorials about the remote sensing applications and uh, in environmental science using Google Earth Engine platform. Thank you for your attention.